All right, welcome back to another episode of Art Time, or the next part of today's episode of Art Time, where today we're going to be finishing up this drawing with these creatures that I've drawn all throughout the area here. And don't worry, this is fine for now. This is going to be duplicated. I'm going to try something new here. But uh, first, got to shade and texture everything before we can really do anything else. So if you enjoy today's uh, part of episode this... Please leave a like and subscribe for more. All right, let's get to it, shall we? So only three creatures here that uh, I have drawn are in the book. The the book that I have here. The others are just randomly created. Some new creatures to have within the area. They all have names too. Probably a huge pain in the ass to remember because it's not like simplistic names. Got like freaking Titan, Baspi, and the Pisidius. Or Pisidian? Pisidius? See, I can't even remember that thing's name. And that's the one. Yep, Pisidius. And that's the one that is in the book. The ones that I'm drawing right now are the Titan. They're in the book, but it's not the same thing that I drew here. No, they're a bit different in the way they look, obviously, because it's freaking pencil. Literally just pencil. No shading, just pencil. Didn't really do shading as much, which is strange to say the least, why I didn't really do shading. It was just clear, full-on, you know, outlines. Don't know why I never really did that before in the past, or at least in the ones that I have seen in the books that I've made so far, but it's fine. I guess I never really had the idea or the presence of mind to do anything shading-related until I got into Photoshop. Well, first it was um, paint, MS Paint, for two drawings. Then it was Photoshop for the rest. I don't know if I still have those MS Paint drawings. I doubt I do. That was a long time ago and on an old computer. This time it's on, we're on a new computer. Well, new. Even though it's having a hard time doing anything video-wise. But you know what? That's fine. <clears throat> Regardless of the fact... We started in paint, then we moved up to Photoshop, and now look at where we're at now. I probably wouldn't have really gotten to this point in paint than I have been doing in Photoshop, so it's a good thing I went into this. It's a good thing I went into this, and it's a good thing I kept at it until I've improved to where I've gotten to now. Granted, there are some that aren't as good as others, but compared to the ones that are good, in the past, these that are not as good, and I'm not saying this one, the ones that I'm talking about was uh, that one drawing I did in uh, Elementals Reborn with them looking over everything. Let me see if I can actually just bring that up real quick. That was 54, correct? Yeah. It looks good, right? But it's not as good as most of the others. And I think that's primarily because I didn't really do much with trees here, but it's very far away, so how the hell am I supposed to make faraway trees look good without having like a giant forest like this? <coughs> Regardless, I think I've done pretty decent with this one, but this is not like extremely far away. Also, I've created like some kind of sand clouds and frost clouds in the back. These are the ones, these two aren't the, the things that are as good as, as, like, you know, this area here with a whole bunch of trees and whatnot. But they're decent enough for now for far away stuff. They're not that important to the drawing. No, what's important is the mid portion. And some of the back portion. <clears throat> and we've been doing good with that as of, uh, as of this recent. So, Titan right here. That you can see what they look like. They all look like, you know, basic primitive humans. None of which utilizing anything too advanced. Utilizing bow and arrow alongside a few other things. And you see that one singular arrow there? I'm going to do a copy and paste technique. A thing that I could have been doing for a long time now to get like multiple things done with. Because I kind of already technically do that with certain brush techniques for, like, small fish and whatnot. So I feel like, you know what, screw it. For this one, and to make things simplistic and go by a lot quicker, and also to fill the drawing up with a lot of things, 
we're going to copy and paste. And that's why I have two different variations. One with, you know, the wings going up with this one, the one with this one, and its legs standing instead of moving. And this one over here, which I think was named a Storkilth? Storkilth? That's supposed to sound Swedish for some reason. I don't know why, but it does. Uh, yeah, Storkil. S-T-O-R-K-H-E-A-L. Look, the names in this one were very freaking strange and sounding and, you know, complex. Bass B, Tartan, uh, Posidius, and then there's the Nexus, which is so simplistic, but that's fine. So I figured, yeah, let's keep that awkward naming scheme up. This is a completely different planet with completely different beings. So it makes sense that they would have different kind of names and you know, language for what you call it. I feel like their particular type of language would probably stum, or stem from, like, uh, something like this. Seong ho kyoth kroleth nivik krik snow. I don't know. Something around the line of that. You got, like, uh, Tortle Gulb, the land tier, which I think was the, what you call it, the deer thing that I just showed you. Uh, the Mit Mitrimic Holmburn Volkbrr or Volkbrr V U L K B I R R Central Flight. A lot of strange named creatures here. But for a place like Criteria with a lot of uh, alien s, and there's a bug over there, and alien s creatures. Yeah, it makes sense, right? So I'm going to keep up with that naming scheme, because why not? Yes, sir. Now, oh, wait a second. You're in the wrong area. You're supposed to be behind him. Why are you not behind him? Why are you doing stupid brain? I don't even know where this bowstring is on the layer department, but I guess it doesn't matter. Whole lot of, uh... Torben Diamond. Dufenheimen. You want to really go down the Swedish route, then think about Swedish names, but or, or Swedish uh, language, except not at all. I don't know shit about that. I don't know anything about any other language. I can barely know English on occasions. I barely understand English sometimes. Speaking of, can be a pain in the ass when you're trying to like keep up with a consistent amount of dialogue. For somebody like me, who is not really used to s just speaking... And usually does like one word responses or few words. Uh, it's hard to really do much in a way of conversating without sounding like a Neanderthal. Like I've had some times where I've talked fluently and like I know what I'm saying. And I've had other times where I'm just stumbling upon my words, trying to figure out what to say, how to say it. And what word to say it. It's a pain in the ass. I wish it wasn't like that. That's the hut. I want to do it at a quiver. It's really annoying. And I wish... I wish there was a fix for it. It also doesn't help that nine times out of ten, I'm extremely tired. Alright, I don't think this one needs to have any textures. This is literally a few pixels. There's no way textures here would actually make any a difference here. Alright, perfect. So now, we get all the, the arrows here. Now I'll make the bottom arrows over here. <clears throat> this guy's got a lot of arrows, now I'll just combine all of those arrows. Increase the size of this. And there, we got a, a full quiver of arrows now. Which is great. Fantastic. Alright, that's him taken care of. And with the way in most of this work, you can barely see most of their body parts here. For instance, the pupil you can barely see because it's underneath the headband. Might uh, change that one up a bit. Let's see here. Alright, no. 
No. Oh, kind of, but... Hmm. That works. There we go. Okay, good. Great. Got that. I gotta say, it is interesting drawing these things from afar. Pixel-wise, they're very small. And some of them are decent size, but that makes sense, because some of them are ginormous. <laughs> Don't forget, these guys are like five to six feet tall. So they're not necessarily hitting any strides in the height department and the size department. <clears throat> I mean, you can see the bass be in the distance it's way bigger than this guy is, and this thing is far in the distance. That's like the size of a hut right there. And this is what those guys have to fight. Can you believe that? That must be a pain in the ass. <clears throat> but they survive out here for as long as they have, and their civilization is somewhat thriving. I would like to think that they have at least some advantages. It just they're probably, more than likely, losing a lot of their people to these creatures. And there's so many of them, too. This is only 15 known cre or noted creatures here in the plains. There is probably, like, a tons more that I don't really feel like trying to draw the designs for from afar. If I wanted to do more with the plains, I can expand upon it a little bit more and give myself some more room to draw more creatures. Maybe name in a different plains, what do you call it? Like a different part of plains, or Great Plains 2, or something. There could be multiple. I do like expanding upon Criteria's creature count, because we have 13 new creatures here. This is 15, or no, 12 new creatures here. This is 15 new to you guys, because you guys, who at least... We're never, we weren't there during the process of Criteria being created. You guys were not here for that, obviously, unless you were. In which case, hello, I have done well in improving upon my art skills from way back when in high school. But there's still a lot more to learn, obviously. Obviously, by the fact that I am now all of a sudden deciding to do copy and paste technique for certain things that requires a lot of things, like the fences here. I'm trying to increase my speed of which I'm drawing certain things, so it does make sense for me to want to try to, at the very least, make it go by quicker. It only really works for things that have like a constant succession, one after another i.e. multiple of the same creatures, or if there is, you know, variations of creatures, we could just put on, like, a de decoration or some shit. The best way to describe that, really. But all in all, um, well, we've improved, at the very least. Background-wise, I still feel like there's a lot more that I can catch up on. I have made one pretty cool background drawing a long time ago, back when I was still doing Chrome Wars. <clears throat> Can I even remember which album that was? It had to have been a while ago. Let me see if I can find that, actually. Real quick, I have the time, I think. Ah, there it is. Mechanical Metropolis. <clears throat> Slightly less full detail than, you know, the sketchbook stuff that I've done. But still, it makes up for it for the effects and everything looking pretty goddamn cool. <clears throat> yeah, I gotta say that one I was proud about. And that was all the way back in album 42 as well. Granted, there was a lot of good things in album 42. Like uh, The Merging Mire, for instance. That one was pretty creepy. As well as Gwyneth and Friends, or Gwyneth Tora. At least Gwyneth, Melanie, and Gareth. Can't remember his name. I don't know why I can't remember his name. So yes, skills have improved in multiple different aspects. Now I just gotta continue to improve upon them. I probably should make your neck a little bit more shaded down here. <clears throat> and you guys should be pretty simplistic since you're so goddamn small. There's barely any pixels here for me to work with. 
And after I get done with then, I'll probably work with the uh, fishes down below. The fish down below. That's the proper term, but fishes sound funny. But yeah, no, it's fish. Well, it's, that's heavily debatable on a... Okay, you haven't... I mean, you've seen it. You've seen the fishes, or the fish that I've drawn here. You've seen them. This one is more fish-like. And you got things like that. And then that weird flea-like creature rock, uh, walking along the water. I would say pixeling this is a hell of a lot more detail-oriented because you have so little to work with. And therefore it makes it look like, you know, the most amount of details are placed into the thing. For instance, I could probably do something like, uh, I don't know, let me put this to 50. Make it look like it's kind of, um, you know, scraggly or some shish. Seems simple enough, right? And then there's this one. The easiest pair that I've ever made. Not even a whole lot of work needed in that one. And there's the net. That one should also be pretty easy. Trying to catch this fish down here, huh? Or medley of other fishes. Fish. A medley of other fish to collect. There's a lot. But there are some giant ones there that are more notable. Obviously. <clears throat> Anyways, um... So yeah, that's pretty much the Titan. Titan are pretty simplistic creatures. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm hoping I had more to say while I finish off the last Titans, at least outlining, but I don't have anything else to say. So, uh, yep. Guy's holding a basket of fish. Now look at the way that looks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Man, look at that guy. He's carrying all that fish, consuming, uh... I was trying to figure out what the, what do you call it, equivalent to, they're doing that pescatarian diet, except they also have meat from other creatures and food, fruits and crops, I don't know, I mean they're hunter-gatherers so maybe they don't farm, that's probably something right, maybe they don't farm, I didn't really exclaim that they farmed in the book, so maybe they don't farm. Maybe they're not farmers. Maybe they're just hunters. They're wearing, like, rag clothing. The shoes that they're wearing aren't leather shoes, although it could be. But I don't think they have the ability to make that stuff. It's basically just simple leather. Some do have metal work, though. I mean, that's what the blacksmith is for. Some wearing metal, some not. Some half naked at the torso. But that's fine. Uh, hold on. What is this that I have saved here? Alright, I'm in the, uh, what do you call it? I need to go over to the creatures. So I think this one is a sun sheet. Yeah. This is a sun sheet. This is basically just the fish. I'm going to also get rid of the water so I can see what I'm working with here. This is basically just a fish that, um, looks like, you know, the usual sunfish that we have in our planet, but, uh, you know, slightly differently designed. Some creatures have some similarities to our creatures on our planet, but it's basically just draw this animal from memory kind of deal. <laughs> Not all of them, obviously. Obviously, there's giant freaking wasps that are meant to have unhingeable jaws that's capable of not only just shooting out magma from their, what do you call it, their orifice, but also to just clean somebody's head off. Also, look, look how fucking big this fish is. Compared to the size of a normal Thornton, look how big this one is. We just finished off the sun sheet pretty easily, but this one, what was this one called again? <clears throat> no, that's, the, that's not the thing. Uh, where was it? I don't think that was it. 
Was it a Noskri? Noskri. Right. Spelt G N A W S K R I. Noskri or Noskri or Noskri. I think it was probably Noskri when I was this writing it up. Well, I'll try to remember to put a pronunciation, pronunciation, whatever, however the hell you say that, in the description. Either doing it today or doing it tomorrow, uh, posting it of the drawing. I don't know. I'm not sure just yet. We did kind of wait into this a little bit later into the day. And it's like 1.30. Well, technically it's around 1.42 or so. Or no, now it's 1.43. Well, let's look at my phone. No, it's 144. Because my computer says 138. For some stupid reason, the computer is completely wrong, despite the fact that it should be using the same damn time frame, but it's not. Oh yeah, see smaller gifts for an interesting looking design here. Whereas in larger form with more details, means that it's a little bit more difficult to get those details to translate properly. You gotta really think hard on how you want the details to look when you're going into the thing in a much deeper format. With all the pixels, the thousands and thousands of pixels that you have at your disposal as opposed to the hundreds that you have here. <clears throat> I don't think this is enough to reach a thousand, that's for certain. I don't know how many pixels there are here, but it's definitely not a whole lot. I, mean, I wonder if I could do this. Are you going to tell me how many pixels are in this amount right here? You're not going to tell me there's nowhere around here that says how many pixels this is? I don't know exactly. Wait, what is this? What is this supposed to do? Oh, I think that's just moving it. Never mind. I thought that was doing the pixel stuff. That sucks. There's no way to tell how many pixels are here. Well, uh, reverse. Reverse out of that. We're not doing that. That's not what we're doing. No, nope, what we're doing is getting this little creature done with here. <clears throat> I'm probably going to have, like, another one over here once I get some textures in. Granted, I really don't know if textures are needed. Oh, yeah, you thought that one was big. Look at this thing over here. Freaking lost Loch Ness Snake over here. Yep, giant ass snake like fish. And they all have beady black eyes to make it more simplistic to have them drawn from a distance so I don't have to have weird looking eyes in the distance. Because why not? It also adds to the kind of creep factor that you see. Besides, most people probably wouldn't be looking this far into here. Most normal people, anyways. Those looking forward into the deep depths of the designs and the creatures that I've drawn here, they're probably going to come in and be like, Oh, why is that thing's eyes black? It's creepy. Why are all these creatures here so creepy? Which, I guess, technically some of them would have a little bit of whites around their eyes, even from afar. I mean, this thing is huge. God damn it. Great, I'm back here now. Alright, how about... There we go, back to the body again. See, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get any textures in here that's going to actually be visible and reasonable to place. Because most of this is pretty simplistic, is it not? <coughs> Anyways, yeah, simple creature here. Snake-like, eel-like creature. I don't know what this would be. Would it be eel-like? Is it a snake? A serpent? Oh yeah, I forgot the name of the creature. Right, of course. This one I think is called a Sarpendril. Yes, a Sarpendril. Which kind of makes sense due to the fact that it looks like a serpent. Yes siree. This thing is ginormous. And it's presumed to be obviously pretty Hostile, right? Like I've stated before, Criteria consists of a medley of hostile creatures. And if it's like a very small percentage of a billion species, 
or at least billions of species. It, it depends on a number. If it's one billion, and that means 25,000 of those species are passive. Then, of course, you've got things like, you know, what if, what if it's like 10 billions or 8 billion different types of species, out of which we're never going to be able to draw, obviously. Because that's just way too many creatures to draw. <clears throat> Even if I made like a very small little montage of all the creatures that I could draw, and one drawing, one after another, in a box format kind of deal, and you scroll in and see most of them, we wouldn't even really be able to cover a thousand then. And it would take like ages to draw all that. So just drawing bits and pieces of the area here is good. I wouldn't really leave this up to interpretation for anybody adding creatures into this though. Although I feel like I probably should to try to get a community aspect going. Turn Criteria into the new SCP. Although, with the demonic and undead-based stuff, that's going to be a little tricky, because we might get self-inserts and whatnot, so I'm not sure if that's something I would be willing to do. In terms of making basic creatures and having them be hostile, I'd say yes, that would be something we can really go for here. I like nice creature designs made and draw like the background of where they would be made and like what region they would be in. Right now, we only got one, though, so it's not like we can really do too much with it. But say if I have, like, a grand total of maybe, like, 60 regions drawn, which is a possibility, we make some, like, you know, insane-looking regions, give them, like, a name, and, like, give them the creatures that will reside in there. See, unlike the Demon Realm, I don't need to... Oh, that's the cool. I don't need to worry about drawing these individually. They, this is more so just landscape and scenery only. Maybe I could draw some scenes and a little bit of creatures here and there and every now and again, but all in all, that's not our objective. Our objective is to draw it in landscape and scenery. All right, now what was this one? Definitely not that. Was it an, ah, I wait, Angrigil or Angra? That's the name's a pain in the ass. Angrigil. Or Angragils. Angragils. A-N-G-R-I-G-I-L-S. Basic premises with it being like an angler-type fish. <clears throat> Why is there an angler-type fish here in the lake? I don't know. Doesn't make any sense for there to be one up on the surface, right? Usually, anglerfish would be down below in the depths. No. Oh. <clears throat> could be potential that this lake here is an entrance to a deep underwater cave system. That's not where I want to go. I want to go to the mouth. But then again, why the hell would this thing be up here if that's the case? Maybe it stays up here to be safe, and then once it's time to feed, it goes down there into the depths, risk its life, and try to find certain types of aquatic creatures that it can then lure and consume. And once it's consumed enough, it digests its food up on the surface, stays there, and it's safe. Perhaps the this creature don't can see them as food or something. Yeah, this one I could definitely duplicate at least a few times and make some small versions as well. Although this one I am definitely going to have to merge all of its layers, so I got to make 100% damn sure that I got everything I need to get done with here with the creature. Shading, texturing wise, meaning make sure we don't need to make any adjustments at all. <coughs> all right. Now that takes care of the shading for the aquatic animals for now. Whoops, uh, I need to go up to my water section here real quick. Well, actually, wait, hold on. Before I go full on in the water section, I probably should, at the very least, get this finished first. Now, this is an aquatic creature, yes, but can I say 100% for a fact if I can consider this to be full on aquatic? 
it walks over along the sides here. And I guess technically it wouldn't make any sense for it to be an underwater cave around this area. But unless the underwater cave is not like, you know, in the depth there, but it's actually between around here or like past this point. Of many things we can do. We haven't seen too much of the area here, so who knows? Could be anything, really. Anything that I desire. Now, the beauty about this series here, I'm remaking Criteria, a series that I've made long ago back in high school. Hell, it might have also been in middle school for all I know. Doubtful, but, you know, it's fine. It's okay, right? Yes, I have to imagine so. Yes. But yeah, it makes sense, right? Freaking a long ago forgotten series that I've made from a decade ago that was not really an internet thing. Bringing that forth back into the chasms of my thousands upon, well, hundreds upon hundreds of creation. I don't have thousands yet. I have a thousand. I don't have thousands. What constitutes thousands? If you have two thousands, does that mean you have thousands or just two thousand? Do you need like cert to pass a certain threshold Threshold, yeah, I said that right. Or did I say threshold? I don't know, threshold bell air. That didn't make any sense, but I'm going with it. Do you have to pass a certain threshold in order for you to have thousands? I don't know, probably. If I would have to take a wild guess of what that number would be, I would say it would be three. At the rate we're going, though, and at technically 120 drawings a year, that's going to take us a few decades. Well, technically not. Right now, this is the 1300th drawing. So if I wanted to get the calculations here, I would need from 1700... It would take me a little over 14 years if, by the definition that I've hereby thought of thousands in order for me to be able to get thousands of drawings. Not also including the hardcore mature drawings, but even then, all that amounts to is just 24 added on, so that's 144 drawings a year. So that probably would be less than, you know... 14 years at least, but still over 13. And this doesn't also include the thumbnail drawings for YouTube, not including the art time ones, because those are the ones that are just the same as what we have been doing in the drawing department, but with the art time thing on it. So it's not like, because before, long ago, you probably didn't even know this because this was like from a while ago. But I changed up the uh, thing, the current Art Time logo is to have what it has currently. Because I think before it was just the drawing itself followed by a number for like a few episodes or so. <clears throat> I decided that wasn't really good. And then I went on ahead and made what I made now. Which is the current Art Time episode. And this is a vanilla cow over here. Yeah, vanilla cow. Oh. But anyways, yeah. It was uh, definitely very unprofessional thumbnails that we had beforehand. Can I say that my current thumbnails are more professional? I would say yeah. I've been drawing them, using them. Art Time's the one that only really has like a consistently changing thumbnail. Because obviously, with that one, it, the drawing itself is the one that's the thumbnail. You want to see what the drawing looks like in full? Go to DeviantArt. You want to see how I draw it in full? Watch it on YouTube. There you go. Very simple, right? But, uh... The only ones that I've changed so far is Minecraft... Terraria, and I guess technically Sonic Adventures 2. Play-Dubs remain the same. Sonic Frontiers, we have only done one series of that. Might do another one once uh, the updates all come out, and uh, I'll definitely do a different thumbnail for that one, because I I think... Whoops, that's 
thumbnail or thumbnail. That's not what I want. I want the hooves or limbs 1B. I feel like we can do better with the thumbnail there now that we know what to expect in that series. <laughs> and the reason why I was able to like do more with uh, the Tales of Berseria thumbnail was because of the fact that I've already played the game and have beaten it. So I have some memories. Clearly, I don't have all the memories, though. If the first and second episode is anything to go off of. Then again, the thing that I did in the second episode is something I'd never done in the others. And the only time that I have done it is when it's forcing you to do it. You'll see what I mean when the time comes, but as it stands right now, that's not going to be for a while now. Or sooner! Matter of fact, I feel like we could get there way sooner than we'd imagine. <clears throat> Good question. Yeah, it's, gonna, it's still going to be a while. It's not like we're going to get through it as quickly as possible. And yeah, even though I already said the name of this thing, this is a store kill. Just giving you a heads up, is all. Alright, this one right here is the Tortle Gulb. Tortle Gulb. It's like a, you know, ladybug-esque kind of creature, but as you can tell by the stinger on its back, it's hostile. Sure, it might have a mouth that's only really capable of consuming small insects, but it is very territorial, and it will defend its territory. Maybe. I don't know. I, this is a creature that's literally free game right now, so as soon as I get to the part where I start making the thumb or thumbnail, the description for it, that's when I need to try to figure out, well, what did this creature do? What is its uh, main reason? Why is it doing what it's doing? It's got a nice, vivid... Bright bulb on its backside. There's a stinger. And a very sharp stinger that is technically more of a blade. If you see the size of this thing. <laughs> yeah. These these creatures here are dead. Because this is huge. This thing here is huge. If you look at the size of this thing over here. Because he's about on the same plane. If you look at the size of this. I'm going to grab this square box here. Just about, like, right here that this creature here makes up. You take it over this side, and it's literally not, like, it, there's no competition. I go back a little bit and a tiny increase. This thing might have the same... It's like a horse, basically. And this... Like, okay, this one would depend because this would be further back here. So this thing could probably, like, walk along the ledge. So it's definitely, like, just a giant horse-like, deer-like creature. This thing, I believe, is called the Lantier. I was so close, close to calling it Lantler. A strange name, and a little bit too on the nose, despite the fact that it does not have any antlers. But this is called a Lant... Lantier. I already forgot its name. Look, these are names that are not meant to be remembered. If you can remember all the creatures' names in the Criteria universe, good for you. You get a gold star. If you can remember all of the creatures' names, as well as what they do, and whether they're dangerous or not, whether you're supposed to avoid them, how you're supposed to handle uh, you know, a situation involving them, if you can remember all of those things, good job. You will survive, well, maybe you'll survive criteria better than most. But putting those that knowledge to the test in the wild is a completely different beast. Because there are some creatures here that are probably, like, extremely dangerous, and there's no easy or good way to be able to deal with it. There's, like, this strange question mark-like creature... Which is basically just a bunch of sparkles, kind of just like arranged in a sparkly pattern. It has literally no information to it. All we know is that it disintegrates things. Upon touching something, it disintegrates it. Which sounds bad, and it's something you probably would want to avoid at all costs. Which makes sense. I mean, think about it. A lot of this place is dangerous. If you see something that looks weird and suspicious, 
and you don't understand what it is, chances are it's dangerous. Get the hell out of Dodge. Because if you don't, you're going to die. <sighs> Especially with that one giant dragon creature. Now it's considered to be one of the impossible bosses. Yes, there's a thing that I had stated saying the impossible bosses. There's a good chance Criteria was kind of going to be like, uh, you know, what do you call it? An RPG-esque kind of game, which makes sense, really. And this one's a little bit tricky because we don't necessarily have that here. So I might have to adjust that as I make another one of these guys. Which makes sense because we're doing this in a disembodied form. This one is kind of fine as is. Ugh. I'm going to try to go back a little bit. I don't think most of the uh, texturing process is going to be that bad. Alright, I can't remember what your name was. Let's see. Ah, the Volkberger. V U L K B I R R. Flying bird. <clears throat> Whose beak I think is actually supposed to be behind that. Yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah, I don't know what these guys do either. I'm just leaving it up to interpretation for now until the descriptions get drawn. So if you want to know more about these creatures, just go on the uh, DeviantArt page. You should be able to find it unless you're several years into the future and we're like on episode 300 of our time. And you're like, well, shit. <laughs> well, actually, look up the, the tag Criteria. Hashtag Criteria. And the search bar, of course. You will find what you need, alongside maybe at least a few more, you know, regions, but go to the first one, the one at the complete back end. That's where you're going to find this creature. If you want more information on it, go there. Which, yeah, makes sense. This is the first one of criteria that I'm doing. The first criteria drawing, and I'm going to try to make it somewhat similar to what I have in the book, <clears throat> albeit... I'm going to try not to really worry about the regions too much because, you know, there's some, some things that, like, are completely different in ways. And it, 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 there's, like, going to be more regions than what we have, basically. There's no reason for me to try to, like, delegate them to one singular region, even though they are likely to only stay in one region anyways. All right, Cadillac, yes, you woo. I can imagine you can lick your chaps and look at me. <sighs> Sucks being tired. Constantly. But I just can't force myself to go to sleep. On time. Ugh. You know what I mean, cat? Cadillac. Yeah, we don't have the, the wings doing that here, so why don't I do that, actually? No, I like that. Like this. All right, cat. You purr? I can't tell. Now you're too far. You're going back to sleep mode, aren't you? Alright, now this one. This one up here. I don't remember what this one's called. Let me look into it. This is called... Ah, uh, yes. This is the central fight. The, the central fight. C-E-N-T... Uh, or C-E-N-T... Why did I... Why did I feel like I said five letters there? C-E-N-T-R-U-L-F-I-T-E. Christ. These things are big. Ginormous. You got ginormous centipede creatures that you have to be concerned about in Criteria. Granted, it makes sense that they would reside in areas of dense natures. Yeah, obviously. 
So this big tree right here, that also houses a um, boss bee nest, or bass bee nest, depending on what, how the hell that name should be pronounced. <clears throat> yeah, the, these, uh, there's, there's just giant insects living within this tree here, and there's probably more that we don't even know about. And could you imagine how terrible the jungle is? And there's some pretty weird and horrific looking creatures that aren't animalistic in any way, but more demonic-esque, undead-esque. Like there's this one half, like, torso skeleton thing that kind of just quickly, literally just bum rushes through the, um, the jungle to try to get to its prey. I'm not going to look at the book right now. All right, this right here is the Roburn. R-H-O-B-E-R-N. Roburn. Essentially, it's like a rhino bear. Yes, a rhino and a bear combined. It is, how you say, more dangerous, more deadly. But probably not. I mean, depends. Compared to the size that the, um, the Torin is. Well, I could test that out right now, actually. Woo! Just about. This thing, from this far away... <clears throat> Jesus! Actually, oh wait, hold on, what am I doing? These guys are about the size of the tree here. And the tree is like this big. And this thing's about the same size. This thing is literally the size of this! If this thing were getting inside a village, it could literally destroy this here, and that's where it'd be standing, right there. My god, I know I made Criteria to be the, one of the more dangerous areas in the entire planet, and a lot of the creatures here are ginormous. Case in point, the boss bee that's 20 feet long and... Uh... Probably other things that I can't remember, but I'm not going to look at the book right now. It's ginormous, these things. I mean, look at the giant ant-like creature in the, the right side. S you scroll back a bit, or wait until I go and get to it. That is... That is uh, also pretty terrifying. There's some reanimation as well. Not like golems or anything. Granted, I guess, yeah, technically, mostly... At the very least, with the creatures of Elementals Reborn and the demons from the Demon Realm. Criteria has those. Both creatures and demon-like entities or cre uh, abominations. Right now, we're just in the more tame area. The plane, obviously, the plains would be more tamed, right? There's no reason for the plains to be full of demonic-based stuff. That shit wouldn't be out in the open, no. It would be hidden in areas like the jungles. Areas of complex traversals. Areas that are a pain in the ass to traverse through. Needless to say, there's no reason for there to be any form <clears throat> of, um, you know, demonic activities anywhere around here. That would stay consistent mostly within the undead region. <clears throat> right now, this is the basic bare bones regions. The Great Plains. Lakes, rivers. It's like modded Minecraft, basically. The plains area here. With the villagers being more human like and actually probably a little bit more competent than the villagers. I mean, they have weapons that they can use to fight. And here is the Matrimic. Matrimic. Which is like a, a mixture of tree and mimic. Matrimic. <clears throat> a creature that resides near forests, but tries to stay within the Great Plains. 
probably would give Siren a head a run for its money. Yeah, he might be tall as trees, but also this thing's tall as tree as well. This thing is tree. It's not as tall as these trees, though. I would say these particular kinds of trees are kind of like, the, you know, this is like the oak tree and this is like the taiga trees or spruce trees. If we're going by Minecraft terms. Even though that does not look anything like oak. That looks more like spruce. But it's like an oak side, or at least the small oak, not the big ones. The ones that I don't like growing because they're a pain in the ass to cut down. <clears throat> it's like the oak sized version of spruce. Or the spruce tree is oak sized. You know what I mean. I don't need to go into any further deep. The point is, these trees are pretty big. I mean, they're all—they're obviously pretty freaking huge when you see how big the people are, and they're five to six feet. The trees are a good measuring metric here. Although I don't know how big the trees are in terms of feet. And obviously, I think I would probably use the meters instead of feet instead. Don't get me wrong, I like feet, but I don't really use that in measurements anymore. Just for kinks and whatnot. Uh, but yes, no, I feel like meters would probably be a better representation for things like this. Smaller number, is it easier to comprehend? Maybe not for Americans, but then again, I don't really know how, what the comparison would be for a a foot anyways. I'm close to six foot. I don't know the exact height, but I am definitely at least around six foot or a tiny bit higher. I have not weighed myself or weighed. I haven't weighed myself in ages either, but I haven't measured myself in height as well. All right, here's the bass bee. This is the thing. This is the thing that some well maybe not some. It depends, because it's one of the first creatures that I drew outside of, like, the humans. The humanoid creatures. Yes, sir. -y. <clears throat> it's, uh, giant wasp-like creatures. With sharp teeth. You can see their sharp teeth right there. And they got jaws! Jaws, mandibles, they could shoot out magma as well. And there are apparently four different types of these things. So I will have to like do a little bit more with this once I'm done with the shading and then the texturing process. But once I'm done with that, I'm going to be duplicating some things that need duplication. Getting certain things their particular looking uh, alternate uh, appearance. So I don't have to like rotate as much. I want to try to avoid rotating. If I can only really move things, or maybe decrease the size, that's fine. But unfortunately, rotating just screws everything up indefinitely. That's the thing. You can't simply just rotate anything pixel-based here. Which sucks. Because that means I'm not able to get, like, cool rotational looks. Even if it's very big, you can't rotate it still, because the pixels on the outside are going to be all blurry. And I don't want blurry pixels. Wait, that's still limbs 1B. You know, it's fine. i got to go through these anyways. There we go. Limbs 1C. Okay. <laughs> All right. And now for the stinger. Yeah. And if I remember correctly from reading that up, Boss Bees utilizes these flowers here to replenish their poison. Those two have kind of an interconnecting relationship. The Boss Bees utilize them to get poison. And, no, that's the head, you fucking moron. 
Go to the eyes. And you can barely see the eyes here. Is this full on black or is it like partly? No, it's not full on black. So why are you not? Uh, is it because of the fact that you are more, uh, what do you call it? No, 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 that was fine. I could just do this. Or not. They're supposed to basically have like checkerboard pattern esque eyes, somewhat, so to speak. You know, the usual eyes that most wasps have. <clears throat> well, it doesn't freaking help if we're still at 10% uh, now, does it? It's fine. That's fine. We don't need to go any further. Really, cat, all I did was move a little bit and you just perked your head up like something was happening. Nothing was happening. The only thing that was happening was me moving. And you just sitting there. Looking at the wall while you're trying to sleep. Are you closing your eyes, cat? Now, what are you doing? You trying to close your eyes, but I keep interrupting you. You hear my voice being thrown in your direction and now it's gone away from your direction, even further from your direction, but now it's even louder. I hope you heard that, but she whirred and yawned and stretched. And I get it. You're tired of me messing with you. There we go. And this one is the Pisidious. This is the one that the absorption bulb plant was inspired off of. I don't remember what album that was. Was it 12? It's definitely one of the more... Older drawings. Could have been 11. Look at A. If I don't see anything in A, look in a different folder. Okay, that's B. That's a C. That's an... Yeah, that's just Alucard. Even from a long time ago. I'm still somewhat and kind of proud of this. Could have done the face better, though. Album 16, folks. But that's not what I was looking for. When did I draw that? Was it album 9? No, definitely not. 8, was it? No, definitely not 8. Okay, definitely not 7. I think it's way further along the lines than I actually realize it is. Is it 17? No, is it 19? No, it definitely can't be 20. Yep, I was right about that. No, not that one. It's definitely not that one. Definitely not this one. Was it a... Okay, I feel like I... No, never mind. I thought I was getting closer memory-wise, but I'm not. When the hell did I draw that? It definitely wasn't this late into the game, was it? Was it called an absorption bulb plant? Am I just looking in the wrong area? Okay, I... Now it's going to bother me until I can find the damn thing. Well, I'm going to just go and do this instead. Uh, JPEG. Absorption. Yeah, Absorption Bull. When the fuck was this drawn? Album 5! Of all the albums, I wasn't expecting it to be Album 5. Yeah, this was basically what this was inspired off of. This Absorption Bull. At least by the thing that this thing did. And this was, again, going off of memory. Not the same thing, obviously. What it does, it consumes the contents of the stomach contents of uh, creatures. The absorption bowl absumes the amino acid. And the quickest way this thing gets inside is through the navel. As if it goes through any other parts of the body where a lot of blood can get exhorted out. Blood is poisonous to this plant. So yeah. No oh god. Why is the lag? It can consume the stomach contents, but it cannot consume the blood. For if it does, it will probably die out. Or get harmed. It depends on how much damage the blood does to it. And I'll just do the, these here. I don't know why the hell this is lagging. It's not the mouse. I know that much for a fact. Something is up with the computer and the mouse movements in Photoshop, and I don't know why. I don't understand why. 
His computer is just getting older, I guess. Soon it will kaputs. I don't know how soon. Surely it has a lifespan, and surely it's getting close to the end of it. <clears throat> Part of me wonders if I should just build a supercomputer. And make sure that I have everything that I need to be able to record and have several tabs open before any noticeable performance goes down. Even though it's unimportant, it's still kind of something I would like to have in general just so I don't have to worry about playing more advanced games that require a hell of a lot more GPU power than this computer can apparently handle. It's a shame, really, but this is a laptop, after all. Can't really expect too much power out of it. Thing is, I can't exactly just get myself a supercomputer. I don't even know where the hell I would put it. Not only that, but I gotta worry about the cat. Isn't that right, cat? Even though I don't feel like you would just be scratching metal, but you have... You keep trying to scratch the TV screen for some stupid reason. Like you're trying to get my attention. I gave you my attention, and sometimes you don't want it. I try to hold you, you don't want that attention. You just want me to look at you. Acknowledge you. I'm acknowledging you, cat. Meow. Wow, she didn't perk her head up that time, and that was a pretty loud meow. Well, whatever. Got to sleep, right? <sighs> Very minor movement, and she's like, <sighs> Loud meow, I sleep. What'd you give me that look for? You tired? I'm acknowledging you. That's what you want, right? Don't give me that look. That's right. I just made your eyes open up wide. Now you're fully awake. <laughs> Any who's and wits. Yeah. Uh, we're almost done with the, uh, the shading portion here, which is great. The texture portion is what's left, followed by duplication of certain things that need to be duplicated. Honestly, there's just no other way. God damn it, I forgot about this one. I'll get this one first before I do the others. There's no other way to do this without having to spend days working on this, and I don't have days. Literally, my deadline is Thursday. <clears throat> my personal deadline, of course. Not like I technically really need a deadline, but I give myself deadlines anyway. That's the scarf, I want the hair. I give myself deadlines anyways to keep my arse moving. Because if I don't get my arse moving, then I ain't going to get shit done with. And we're not getting a whole lot of drawings out. And I do want to get a whole lot of drawings out primarily because of a few reasons. One of which being I do want to get to certain things that I'm looking forward to. And the other being, well... It's always good to constantly remain active. <clears throat> YouTube isn't exactly the thing that I'm constantly remaining active towards, though. Yes, I do have five videos a week at minimum. And the occasional art time episodes that do occur. Granted, it's not as frequent as it has been before in the past. I have done a few drawings not on camera. Which makes sense. I kind of do want to, at the very least, take some time for myself to draw the things I want to draw. I don't want to just all do everything in YouTube. Or YouTube. Doesn't mean I'm not going to, you know, continue. I'm going to keep making it. Just means that it's not going to be as frequent as most. As, the, as it was before, I mean. I mean... I'm probably the one who has done way more art time episodes than most other people have done. Like, what episode was this again? Actually, I could just look at... Oh, well, no, there's an easier way to look it up. I'm not going on YouTube. I'm going over to my temporary video base and looking at the thing here. This is episode 130, part two. <clears throat> Me, personally, I feel like I have more art time episodes than most. But, then again, I've started this way late into the game, so there's some people who probably have, like, 500 episodes. <clears throat> Depends, really. I mean, 
me talking usually gets me through this quickly. Not having any videos on in the background helps me get through this quickly. Although trying to find topics to talk about is very difficult. <laughs> I guess that would probably be why some people don't do that. Or those that do do it, do like a speed lapse instead, and then goes through the entirety of the drawing process. Well, here I am doing like bits and segments, just showing you little bits of it while talking. This one I don't care to, uh, you know, try to do like from start to finish, because... Look, I'm so used to drawing on my own and having a video on in the background. At the very least, having little bits and pieces of me drawing and talking is a good thing to have to kind of like mix things up a bit. Instead of the usual speed laps of an entire drawing, we do bits and segments and that's it. There was a time long ago where I tried to do mostly everything on camera, but that didn't last very long for obvious reasons. <laughs> There's only so much an anti-social introvert can really talk about. Yeah. Surprised that I have been able to keep this up for as long as I have, and haven't really fully burned out. I can feel a little bit of burnout, though, on occasions, where I'm like, Ugh, man, do I want to do this now? Do I even have anything to talk about right now? Technically, I don't need to talk about anything, I just need to draw. Why do I need to talk about anything? Sure enough, here I am talking about it. Yeah, but gabba ghoul. And all that. That reminds me, Shad Man's back, apparently. You know that guy? One of the most deviant artists out there? Not deviant artist. The most devious artists, infamous artists, I guess will probably be the proper term. That's grass, I didn't want grass. He's, he's back again. I, I guess he got out of jail. Just the same as Chris Chan's got out of jail. I don't know much about that. All I know is a lot of things occurred to there. Enough to spam an entire web series out of it. I was thinking at one point maybe I could draw Sonichu, but make it look badass and have him like do a little snap finger lightning with, you know, the usual Sonic mad eyes. You know, just to show that it's not the design that's, you know, weird. And, you know, what do you call it? It could do... You could look good. You could make it look good. It just needs... A, um, a different artist's touch. So I'm sure there are some people out there that would exclaim that, uh... There would definitely be people out there that would exclaim that Chris Chan's artwork is the best. And those that do exclaim that, well, I'm not gonna judge. Everybody has their own style. Even if it isn't really, like, you know... Professional? Or a lack of a less harsh word? Regardless, it doesn't exactly matter. Everybody's got their own art style. <laughs> and part of me has wondered, well, I wonder if I were to go on ahead and give that a shot. Draw Sonichu. Looking badass. Snapping fingers. I don't know what he would be snapping fingers to with a lightning strike. <laughs> Technically it would be a little side reference to, uh, what was her name again? Urbosa? That... I can't remember the names. The Gerudos? The Gerudo ladies? <clears throat> the champion one? I mean, sure, if somebody else wants to try that out, you're more than welcome to do it. We all have our own styles that we, uh, won't change. Oh, God. That was a, a brief jump scare. Considering how big this creature is, yeah, that makes sense. <clears throat> I mean, in terms of uh, strange crossover characters, 
You know, with Sonic and Pikachu. I have made Rack, uh, Wreck It Ralph long ago in the past. And also, <laughs> oh, also, how could I forget Handsome Squid Soka? This is an album four drawing. See how my shading work was way back then in the album four? Now you see what it's like. It's, it's more refined. I don't know. There might be some people who will be like, I miss that old shading style. There was something nuanced to it. Which, to each their own, I guess. <clears throat> Where was that Wreck-It Ralph drawing? I feel like I should be able to find it here. Was it album A? Probably not. Album 10? No, was it 11? I feel like I'm getting warmer. Was it 12? There it is! Uh, an album 12 drawing. Wreck it Ralph on Wreck on Rolf's uh, Wreck it uh, Rolf's head on Wreck it Ralph's body. Ah, the olden days of drawing. I remember those days. I remember those days like it was yesterday. Except not at all. I barely remember them. But those were more made for comedic purposes. I I, I get a funny feeling that Chris Chan was serious about Sonic Chu. Although, I would find it hilarious if one day we meet Wreck-It Rolf. And then we all get to suffer from mocking the shun of a shepherd. Because not only does he have the strength of an Amish a boy, he's also got the strength of a destructive force of nature alongside of him. But take that and amplify that with his uh, current form. And you've got yourself... A city-destroying, no, nay, planet-destroying monstrosity before us. Oh dear, if the dimensional merge were to ever happen, Wreck-It Rolf would lay waste to our lands, mow our crops, because he would see them as competition for his own crops, and also steal all the women. Wreck-It Rolf gets all the bitches. I joke, of course, but there are some people out there who are going to probably create a religion all around Wreck-It Rolf. And funny enough, it all stemmed from a freaking Markiplier video of an old horror video that he did long ago. I don't even remember what it was, but he was going through some, like, old grandma's house or something and reading off some movie, like, names, and there was just Wreck-It Rolf right there. And that's what stemmed Wreck-It Rolf. Christ, that part of me wants to draw Wreck-It Rolf now. Also, this cloth texture actually works kind of perfectly for a far away scales texture. Kind of. It would probably look a hell of a lot different if I used the other type. <laughs> but it does look more like scales, doesn't it? Probably should do the same with this as well. I'm just going to texture everything in first before I do any um, anything else. So yeah, needless to say, I guess we got ourselves some strange combinations. I do have one, not even, it's not even a strange combination. It's a pretty terrifying combination. Not terrifying in a sense that it's like overtly creepy, but it's the kind of creep factor where it's like, you know, I don't want to say it just yet. I think, ah, oh, fuck, wait. Ah, uh, wait, hold on. <coughs> oh, that's a good question. All right, that, wait, that's what I was talking about. I was thinking about maybe having, because before I was, like, next limitation period, 2024, I had the plan of drawing some, you know, of the Vulcans from uh, this mobile game that has been pissing me off more lately now than ever. <sighs> Anyways, I am thinking about drawing Volca again. My cute little imp girl, who is not really, you know, girl, but more woman. At the very least, if all the cre if all the heroes there are meant to be, like, adults, because there is an old man who looks the same chibi-esque appearance. Not even chibi. It's so simplistic. It's so... 
I can show you it. I can show you the, the first, not the first, the second drawing I've done of her. But dear God, am I going to have a hard time trying to find it. I have over 55 albums. Although, granted, it's probably, well, maybe B47. No, that doesn't make any sense. 39, 38. No, I love her looking 38. 40, no. 41, ah, there it is. There she is, Imp. And this is what she looked like, assuming I still have the pictures. In the game, why is there two screenshot folders? It doesn't matter. Two draw, where are you? I know you're here. You're he there she is. And that's what she looks like. So simplistic. And yet, for some strange, unknown reason, I've drawn her twice now. Once is less as good as this. And the other one, well, I don't think I need to mention that one, if you know what I mean. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Flirtatious eyebrow rage. At least, you know, with the stuff that I do. So, yes. We've got another Midna situation over here. Or, yeah, Midna. Imps. Short stacks. Either short stacks or tall stacks. Which is, you know, what do you call it? Par for the course. We've got Moon being a short stack. we got Violet. Yeah, Violet. Being six foot tall. Mm-mm-mm. We like all the sizes, don't we? Except for overtly skinny, because that's unhealthy, and overtly fat, because that's also unhealthy. Chubby is fine, and a little slim is fine as well. But if you're on the unhealthy aspect, that's not good. That's, that's not healthy. I'd worry. I would worry in general. Health is an important factor, even though I don't keep track of it. Yet, I still somehow manage to stay the same size, no matter what. Pint of ice cream every week, once, the whole thing, and yet I still am the same size. I guess I've reached a stagnant position, which is fine by me. Most people would probably eat like a pint of ice cream every week, and they would be like, Ooh. But here I am, still at least, uh, how much is this? Uh, still, like, right here. Maybe, somewhat, so to speak. Right here. Just about. While they would be like, Ugh, or something like that. I at least got that going on for me. Yeah, sure, I might still be chubby. But compared to everybody else here in America, huh, I think I've got off pretty easy. Genetic-wise. Granted, I would like to get a flatter stomach. But then again, I probably would make these more pronounced. Which, honestly, is fine. It don't matter. Who knows? Maybe we'll find somebody who's into that kind of stuff. Mixture, you know? I mean, yeah, I guess technically speaking with... I don't know. That might not actually work in my favor because nowadays those kinds of scenes have become more difficult to get into, right? Besides, I'm not really looking into going into any dating sites anyways, so what does it matter? Like, I'm sure I can get a guaranteed match or two, at the very least. You gotta downplay it, because chances are, if you think, Oh, I'm gonna get all the matches in the world, then turns out you get none. Because that's what life wants to do. Life wants to be a piece of shit, that constantly gets in your way. And be like, you're trying to boast? Well, here, let me suck the fattest of cocks and make your life more miserable now because of it. <clears throat> I will say one thing. While life does focus on people it shouldn't be focusing on, it has focused on those that do deserve it. But it also still focuses on those that don't deserve it. Case in point, that CEO from Ocean Gate Sub. And I looked into it a little bit more. Because a lot of people don't really look into that stuff. And I wanted to like look into it and make sure that I have my facts straight. But there's a, there was only really like one person on there, i.e. the CEO, that was bad. 
There was a few on there that weren't uh, bad and just wanted to, like, you know, go down into the depths to look at the Titanic. Those who have, like, some history towards it, as well as, you know, those that wants to, you know, impress those fathers and whatnot. Uh, it was a, I believe, if I remember correctly from what I read, there was, like, a Pakistani billionaire who, <clears throat> from what I have seen so far and what have people have been saying haven't had any morally apprehensible, like, means of getting it. I think it was just inheritance. Lucky for him. Unlucky now that this douchebag occurred and made them die because of his overtly, overly confident, uh, wrong, confidently wrong, confidently, he's just overtly confident. He let his pride get the best of him. And life was like, oh no, you don't get to have pride, death. And just because, I mean, even bigger douchebag, these guys also get death. I'm not even going to give them a chance to live. Death to them as well, because I am, the, uh, I am an asshole. Me, life, am asshole, and wants everybody to suffer because I hate my life, which is dictating your lives. Well, bitch, why the fuck are you dictating our lives? Why can't you go do something else with your freaking life, huh, you stupid omnipotent being? I'm giving a physical form for no reason whatsoever. Maybe it gives a fickle, not even a physical form. It's more like a, a named form, right, Cat? This thing called life that needs to get its ass slapped by Kratos and Saitama and Goku and Shaggy in his Ultra Instinct form and Shrek. Is there any more meme-based characters and strong-based characters that I'm missing here? Uh, and get his cock blowed by Kirby. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> but you know what? We're sticking with it. That's right. Suck his dick. Oh. <laughs> that, that the... <laughs> Technically, yes, but also no. Technically, it works in two different ways. You're both sucking his dick off, and uh, uh, what, what would be the and uh, do I have a ah yes of course I will use this sharpie marker and sucking his dick off. That's right. Why do we go down that route? Why do we keep going down it? <sighs> Moving on. Yes, we get to leave that there. Because you don't have a choice. All you get to do is just be like, yeah, you ain't living this down, and be like, that's yeah, fine. Talk about it all you want. Keep spreading the word. That's right. Talk about it all you want. People will be like, ooh, I wonder what he was saying here. There must have been a lot of weird things said here. That's right. There's, de there's a lot of weird things in all of these videos. You just got to find them. Yes, go look for them. You will find some weird stuff, right? Yeah, of course you will. Where did I... Oh, I, I'm still got to get all these guys down. With the well, I feel like the rest of these guys should be easy. But anyways, yes, the Pakistani billionaire guy and his kid. I don't know if he went in there. I mean, you would think you go into a submarine, it looks unsafe. You'd be like, okay, surely it looks unsafe. Yes, that's the case. But surely this professional has our best interests in hand. Of course, you would think that people who are in their profession would be professionals, right? Wrong. There was a, a French guy who um, was like an avid Titanic collector. <laughs> he got on there. And then there was also some old guy, but I can't quite recall what his story was. <clears throat> I think he was the other billionaire. There was like two billionaires, the CEO, one of the billionaire's childs, and an artifact collector or some advent uh, Titanic 
guy who wanted to go down there because, eh, sure, why not? I'll go down there again. Surely this is safe. You don't expect incompetence to really be the death of you. <clears throat> but, you know, I feel like there's a lesson to be learned in all of this. Don't trust everybody. Don't trust anybody who's professional in anything. I feel like anybody who's in like a professional position can be like, no, you shouldn't trust anybody. You, you shouldn't even trust me. Because I might just lead us to shit or something. <clears throat> Hell, I feel like, you know, the few that I can name would probably be like, yes, you shouldn't trust me either. Even though it's more so just a case of creativity and whatnot. I feel like Markiplier would definitely be like, yeah, sure, you shouldn't trust me. Of I, I, if you think I'm a professional at... You think I'm a professional at this? No, wait. You think I'm a professional at this? The man who likes milk. The man who... <clears throat> the man who milks... Wait. <coughs> God, my voice is too high-pitched right now to attempt that. The man who liked milk come to consume. The man who milked. Oh, sweet, sweet milk. Sound like Crunkaplier. Oh, bo oh boy, Crunkaplier's back, everybody. Oh, succulent, sweet milk. Wait, milk, I'm at the same. Oh, god dang it. I lost it. I'm back to Crunk now. <clears throat> or just once. Either way, it's, uh, yeah. I feel like I gotta do a good Crunk for a little bit while long before I can go into, uh, Meat Applier. Yeah, we're going by Meat Canyon, uh, Mark Applier version, Meat Applier. Or Milk Applier. I don't know. Doesn't matter. Sure, Milk Applier. <clears throat> All of this sweet, delectable milk. I can milk you. Wait, wait. There's no waters in this one. But I could still milk you. Ah, <laughs> oh, Christ. This entire part of this episode is filled with so many innuendos. Some subtle, some not so subtle. That's the dirt. I wanted the butt. <clears throat> this layer is named the butt. If you're asking why I said I wanted the butt. Which I guess technically is still the truth, even if you don't see the layer, because that is the butt of the beast. Man, we're really going down a rabbit hole, aren't we? <sighs> I can't turn it off. I can't turn it off. You might think it's just a normal hole. But if you think of rabbits like... Lola, Judy, hell, even bugs, if you're into that. D uh, drag or normal, doesn't really matter. There's the rabbit hole for you. <laughs> it just, we can't turn it off. Now we're going full on Markiplier, where we just talk about dicks and, and, uh, milk, I guess. I can't remember what the second one was. Sure, why not? Dicks and milk. That's... That's not a horrific combination. Unless you're talking about dipping your... <laughs> dipping your dick in milk. Oh, I don't know enough innuendo names to try to reference what that would be called. I don't know the equivalence of what would be technically a Cleveland steamer. But with milk instead, but in dick instead of chest. That's the only one I know because of the whole family guy thing of Peter asking Lois for a Cleveland steamer while... Uh, Brian was trying to explain it, and I'm like, I don't know what that is, so I looked it up, and I was like, oh, I see. I see now. I, I now am enlightened on even more terrible things that I have been exposed to. Bodily functions are not my uh, thing, that's for certain. Definitely not. Even though, yes, I have ate ass once before. I don't know how I felt about that. It was weird. It was weird indeed. Yes, we went down the shibby route. T 
tongue in and all. If there's anything I can say that I have done, that I have forgotten that I have done a long time ago, it is to say that I have definitely, indeed, in the past, once before, eaten ass. I shall not say whose, because obviously naming names is not good in general, even if you're freaking not popular. Because maybe one day you do get popular, and now you've named this person you ate the ass of, and they're going to be like, we got to find this person! And yes, that's... That's, uh... Okay, I think everything here is textured. Yeah, I've done at least that. Can't really say that I'd do that again. Don't think I would ever do that again. It is definitely an acquired taste. I ain't no shibby, that's for certain. But I can say that I have done it once. Alright, now that we're done with that... Do we have any more to talk about? Hmm? Is there any more things that we can discuss? No. Well, let's go to the Stolkum. Or, no, the Storker. The Storkiel. Shit. Alright, I'm gonna copy this. I'm going to grab the U. Is that everything from this one? Yeah. I'm gonna move you uh, into a different area. <clears throat> <laughs> and this is where we're going to duplicate some creatures. I shall delete these. Yeah, that was creepy. Then I shall move you. I guess that's fine. A giant thick neck. Oh, yeah. A giant thick neck. Um, Alright, delete, 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 delete. Good, great, fantastic. Alright, good, I got the cow here. The Storkule. The cow equivalent. that's the wrong one. The cow equivalent. I'll just have this guy over here. I'll have another one here that's just standing and grazing. Make it a little, little bit smaller, not that, by that much. It's about right here. <clears throat> I have another one that's over here in the back. I shall combine these, though. And I will name them. Good. Great. And I'll put them all within the store kill. And I don't think I'm doing anything more outside of just these four, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's good. Uh, I'm just getting the ones that have uh, separate parts done with first. Now for the Lantier. I shall copy you. I should close both of these, though. I shall put you off to the side, like I did the last one. Uh, well, I gotta grab both of these. Technically, I need to only grab... Well, fucking Christ, I should have moved these a little bit better, but it's fine. It's fine. Move down the hooves. Uh, further down than that. You can't see it, <clears throat> but don't worry. There are things being changed here. All right, good. I think that's just about where that needs to go. <clears throat> there we go. Woo! I just got to delete these now that I got these in place. <clears throat> right, cat? And I would say the only other things that I could probably do with this is the tail. Have it whipping its tail around a little bit. Let me not fully do that just yet. At least make a copy where the tail is normal. Then we go back to the tail here. Well, that didn't help. <clears throat> there we go. And I'm going to go back to the tail again and try to fix this a little. There we go. Uh, we might only have, like, a few here. It depends. Grab both tails again. Rotate a little bit. Bring it down. There we go. 
Now we're just going to move this guy closer to the water. It's standing close to the water. <clears throat> this one's looking off in this direction, making him a little bit smaller. I shall make another variation of you, but make you smaller like the baby ones. Little baby ones, because why not? Uh, change the tail orientation again. The smaller ones, they look generally the same. I would say the only other difference here that I could probably go on ahead and try to make for a few of these. No, nah, that should be higher than that. That should be 10. Some of them will have a little bit of white bits on them. Like white fur. This one can have a darker undercarriage. Brown fur. I'm gonna have like darker hooves down below. The cows don't have any differences to them. I guess that's just how that's gonna be. You are gonna have a darker top side. but also a lighter bottom side. And also a lighter face. And a lighter neck beneath and a darker neck above. As for the tails, depends really. I can make your tail a little bit brighter. Uh, well, that as well, but also this is the one I want to make brighter. This one I could probably make it more bluer. And this one I can make more brighter. There we go. An interesting gaggle of land tears. I don't know exactly what the hell they'd be called, but that's fine. I don't think this one's direction really matters where it goes, but I'll just put it here and put the rest where they need to be. There we go. All right, good, great. We've been at this for an hour and a half. Jesus, I thought we were going to be done with this a little quicker. I might not have enough time to post this Wednesday, so we'll have to do that at some other point. Uh, all right, the Volt Bird now. Do the same thing, open up, go to wings. This one is actually pretty easy and doesn't require a whole lot of... Wait a minute, I need to move everything out of the way first before I start doing that, because I don't know what I'm getting rid of. Right, okay. Wing one, wing two, put it here. Move it up a bit. <clears throat> delete wing one and delete one. There we go. Now I just gotta go over to here, delete these, delete that. Delete that. No, 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 to be, you fool, to be. And now we got these birds over here flying in a pattern. Getting a little smaller. And whoops. Essentially, they're going to be flying in like a V shape esque pattern. In succinct with each other. Yeah. V shaped birds. All following the same pattern. As simplistic as most of this is, it is a hell of a lot nicer. And also allows for a quick and easy way to get everything where it needs to be. Yeah, everything is in order. So I need four. 
three, two, one. Is that in the right order? It is in the right order. Good. Great. Okay, good. Awesome. So we got the Voltberg. The Voltberg. Oof. Christ. I could probably at least copy another one of the Toldberg, but only have it really in this direction and make it smaller as it's further in the back. I only really need one, I'd imagine. We'll keep one of these, one of these. These I do want to get multiple of. <laughs> and this is the one that's going to be a little bit more tricky for one reason and one reason only. I have to combine everything here. Let me just make sure. Okay, so I do, it is the fin B. I don't know what the I is. I think that's something else. The hell were you called again? Sonshi. Sonshi. Little sunfish like creatures. Got like an entire school's worth of these guys made here. They're trying to slowly but surely make their way over to this area. Okay, could probably try to like duplicate more of these like so. I think I try to make you a little bit bigger. There we go, a school of Sunshi. Hell, I could probably get like another school going all the way back here, but make them smaller. There we go. Whoops. Good, great. And I think it just goes as far as 1C, I think. Yeah, 1C. All right, now what the hell were you called? No, sun, turtle, the bird, the wolf, no. Not an angry gills. Not a central light. Nos 3, right, I think that's what you were called. Nos 3. Yeah, they were called no screen. Good, great, fantastic. And we'll have another one swimming around here in the back. Like swimming like this, you know, usual way that most fishes swim. Most fish swim. Only one need for that. This one I could probably at least make a, a few in the background. I'm going to grab your name as well. Angry Grills. Angry Grills. Where is you at? Horns, tendrils. What is this? Oh, right, you. This is what we want. Hey, perfect. It's only one. Or the, the only one on the bottom, at least. I get like one over here. I wonder if I can get it underneath the, the kelp. Oh yes, look at that underneath the kelp. These giant anglerfish-like creatures just swimming around, swimming about, doing their own thing. Up to no good. Sorry, making trouble in their neighborhood. I'll uh, put it like, maybe not too close to shore, maybe like have them stay close towards the uh, central area of the lake. Right, cat? You're just gonna move, not gonna acknowledge anything, just gonna move, stretch, and get out of dodge. And I see how it is. Me. And that's not what I wanted to do. All right, these guys are going to be a little tricky because there are multiple variations that I would like to make as well. Mm, not too small. Is this fine? Yeah. Fine enough to have it be back here. 
So we got like the base form. <clears throat> and then we just have a whole bunch of them over here doing their thing. God, could you imagine wasps the size of a freaking hut, a small hut at that? Okay, there is at least one thing that I would like to do here. I like how everything, you can't see it, but everything here also says copy. Even though it's technically in its own folder and shouldn't need to have a copy. Okay, this one I don't think I really need to worry about like copying over because all I needed to do is just, you know, do this. Also, I'm going to open up the Boss Bee. <clears throat> there are four different variations of Boss Bees. Let's see. This particular Boss Bee has somewhat of a hat-esque helmet thing here. A nice helmet, so, um, helmet variants. Don't know if that's going to be the case. I don't think I can do this. Yeah, no, it only works for layers. Wherever the thing is. I'm going to do this. Yeah, I can do it. And these guys have a more red appearance. God damn it. Ten percent hue from their usual. Helmet variants. Uh negative ten percent that's not percent. Percent hue. I think that was negative ten percent, right? Yeah, negative ten percent hue. That's one of the variations of these things, because I did say there was four different variations, but I only drew the one. They're all flying around, so you can't really like rotate it without the pixels getting all messed up, but at this distance it doesn't really matter. It actually works perfectly if they're blurred. <laughs> the helmet ones are the ones that usually stay around near the base. <clears throat> Simple really, right? I want to go back over to here real quick. Grab this version. <clears throat> Ooh, sheesh. Make it small, but not that small. And this one. It's going to be an interesting one. Gonna be one that has a lot of spikes on it. This is the frontmost spikes. Okay, I'm just going on to here for a quick second. Spikes. Oh, the pens. Go here. Well, this doesn't exactly help if I can't see the damn thing. Um, let me go to which one? This, this one? Cancel. What am I looking at right now? This one. Let me see where this goes. I want to go for... So what? Close to negative 180? I could try this and see what happens if I do this at negative 180. Not here, though. Here. Don't think that really would have mattered, though. Yeah, hold on. Okay, somewhere. We're getting somewhere. And that might work if I do some things. So I will just go on ahead, do that. One part of the spike variation. Shade them, obviously. 
Actually, I don't even have to do a recreation. I just gotta, like, copy all of this, move it over. As soon as I get the right, like, look. I can hide that now, actually. Man, it is hot in here. Does it look like I'm sweating? Because I am. Hmm. It's not going as bright as I thought it would. Unless negative 180 isn't what we want. I'd say maybe plus 150 could probably work. Spike variance. 150 hue, uh, percent hue. Just take the usual one, then do the 150. Oh, wait, no. Not negative. You can't see it, but there's a negative value. Alright, good. I'll just copy this one. Put this at the bottom. And now the only other thing, that is not at the bottom, that is completely different where it should be. The only other thing that I want to do now is delete these bits. That's not what I wanted to do. I don't know if that's going further than it should be. No, don't. Now you're empty. You don't say. Okay, so that's just like that. Got it. Alright, no, no worries. No worries. No warriors. Yeah, look at all those spikes in the back there. Mmm, that is dangerous. That is su That's shadows. I need mint tones. That is a supremely dangerous variations of the boss bee. Something that we didn't have in the book. But we're adding on to here. Now, I'm going to do this. Hue 150. Maybe not 150. Well, it depends. 150, saturation, negative 50. Oh, negative 50. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Hue 150, saturation, negative 50. There. There it is, the spiked variation. Larger, way more threatening. And they're the ones that are, un are unable to go into the hive. They're the ones that are like the uber guards, essentially. The ones that stay mostly around the hive. Occasionally you'll get these variations, but uh, they're not that big of an issue. All right, and now there's another one, another variation that I gotta make. I did not want to go to the bodies. I want to go to the bass bees. Also, I should. Oh, I can't hide any of those because those are all in their own category. This one is a hell of a lot smaller. Smaller, but just as deadly. You can't really see too much with it. Alright, let me do this first and just test. So it would be a plus 60 hue and a negative 40 saturation that I would want. So maybe I can figure out exactly what I would like to do for this thing. Unless this one has a much longer stinger. That could be the variation uniqueness to it. Oh, but that looks terrible. Alright, idea. Let me go to my stingers here then. So I mean, that's the right one. Much longer stingers. Wing size, way larger. I could probably just take these two wing types here, copy them. Now I gotta figure out which ones to copy. These two? Yeah. Yeah, that works. 
That'll work just fine. And I'll bring this down below body 1B. Where the, uh, of course, where the wing is, obviously. Uh, then there's the, ah uh, yes, the other wings. So I just take this, do, or uh, rotate, or flip, delete these, and that. But they won't have, whoops, they won't have any mandibles. The version that don't have mandibles. But instead, what they will have, I probably should have at least kept some of those there. Hold on, let me keep at least, yeah, that so I can delete. What they will have is tusk. Like, what do you call it? Spike tusk. Not actual tusks, but spike. Very, very strange looking creature, but it's fine. And the only other thing that I could probably add... is a much more vivid antenna. I'm curious to see what the hell this is going to look like with the, uh, what do you call it? With the current hue idea that I have in mind. 60, negative, 40, I think it was. Wonder what it's going to turn into. If it turns into anything. Could turn into something like crap, but there's only one way to find it. 60, negative 40. That is not negative 40, negative 40. Okay, that's not too bad. Um, what would this be called? You got the helmet variant, you got the spike variants. You've got the blade variants, I guess. 60% hue, negative, nope, negative 40% saturation. Yeah. Okay, that's not a uh, 50%. That's a negative 50. Okay, good. I got at least some of the boss bees set. Save that right now. Awesome, we got a couple of the unique looking variants. Red, yellow, green. We don't need too much more outside of that. And now that I've kind of just gotten all of these guys set, I'll just copy all of them. Because there was an easier way to move them around. Okay, that's the copy down there I'm moving. It's fine. Now we're gonna have some versions just flying out. I don't know. But going further out in that direction. Oops, too small. Oh, it depends. Like, how far are these guys moving? That's not what I wanted. That's also not what I wanted. Don't go there. Series of ginormous wasps. I'm just copying or combining all of this. I don't think I'm doing any more with this. Boss be hordes. Because there's a horde of them. There's a couple over here next to this Posidius. And I guess I could probably, technically, in all likelihood, get some more of these over here around the tree. I'll have one right here. Another right here. You can just see the stem of it. Another right here, but make it a tad bit bigger because it is a little bit further out into this scene here. It would make sense that they would go near these particular kinds of trees or plants or whatever the hell they're supposed to be. There's just one like right off in the distance. 
maybe it's like they expended all the poison there for a the time being, and while they wait for it to recharge, they go out into the further Cosidius plants. Uh, the hell are you doing, Francis? There's just so much here that I am doing right now, and it's a lot. It's a whole lot. But that's fine, because this is kind of what we want. Now, I could move these birds a bit more, have them be, like, up here instead. Because there's no way I'm going to have all the creature shadows be exact. Especially since a lot of them are duplicated and whatnot. I could also make smaller versions to have going in the background. I mean, obviously, they would be all over the place, right? Birds flying around in a very particular pattern, whatnot. These guys. Looks like an actual civilization, kind of. If there was anything more that I would like to do, however, I would say it would have to orient to making more land tiers. So I could probably, whoops, that's the wrong one. I could probably get some more over here. Like make them even smaller because they are a bit further away. Like so. Did I have a walking variation? No, they're all, no, that, is, that one is a walking variation. What am I saying? Two. No, I already got a two. I think this is like a four now, right? Yeah, and we've got the standing ones. I mean, we want more of these creatures all around the place, right? Why not? Five. Hell, I can even probably adjust their hue a little bit. Saturation. So this one will be a little bit more brighter. Vivid. This one can be... A little bit more saturated. Oh yeah, I have an idea for that one. This one can just stand right next to this guy over here, but he... It, that's not what I wanted. He's gonna be darker. There we go. More land here. And it would make sense that not every single area is going to be teeming with a bunch of creatures. But you see some here, see some here, see some here, here. A lot here, obviously. I could definitely probably put some more of the cows over here in the back, though. I feel like that would be a good idea. Let me do just that. Oh, the Storkill. Get over here, Storkill. You're going to be all the way back here. Grazing cows all the way in the back. Wait, how big are you? Compared to this thing, you're about like half the size of the tree. So that means in this distance, you're kind of perfect where you're at. I'm probably going to do this. Where's the brown? Or orange, I should say. Got a, a chocolate milk variant. I mean, sure, why not? Let's get some unique variations happening here with these Storkill. That's a Jeb store kill right there. Somebody named that one Jeb. No. no we're, not, we're, we're not making Jeb store kills. There you are. I will, however, make an albino variation. It'll only be one, and I'll make it a little bit smaller. I mean, we already got variations of certain things, so I might as well make even more variations, right? Make you bigger. And now I will make you more... Pinkish? There, nah, not that one. Not that color. Not sure about that one. I'm not sure about that one at all. Seems like it's sickly if we make it like that. I was trying to make it more like an alpha. 
Unless instead of doing that, we go on ahead and have one be grayish, grayish bold. Makes sense. Raising bowl like creatures in the back. All right, perfect. Great, fantastic. All right, I think that might be all that I can do here. So it's time to go into the shadows and effects portion. I will keep these all a copy. I do not feel like trying to rename all of them. It is fine as is. I think I'm only going to have one shadow here. So we're going to have to be very careful with how we do most of the shadows. This is full on black, right? Yeah, good. Just need to make sure, you know. Hey, this is still good, though. Being able to have all of these things here and fill it up without having to waste too much time drawing basically the same thing over and over again. This is something I kind of did before in the past with most of the Demon Realm demons. I mean, these guys kind of fly around like regular old bees, but they act like wasps. I guess technically, with the way it works, it's perfect. Hmm. Am I sliding over? No, you're just going slow for some reason. I don't exactly remember what else was there with Criteria. I think there was like a, a planet, another planet that was near it, but it was like an all-water planet that basically just had ginormous tsunamis that covers the entire planet. Like, here is the spherical of the planet. I don't know if this is the right one. This might be where the Ripkins are. And, he, uh, what's the best way to describe this? Here is the tsunami side. And it, if we're like, okay, so if this is like the event side, horizon size, and it's like the center where it is, the tsunami, this is where the, the baseline of the tsunami is, this line right here, slowly goes around the planet in a ring until eventually it crashes. And then it continues even further to the other end until it crashes again. And it's a consistent, uh, you know, wave that never ends. It's an all-ocean planet. There is only water. It's filled with ginormous with sea creatures. The Riptians are also a part of it. And see, that's the thing. I don't recall. I remember there being another planet close to Criteria, but it was like all water. I just don't know if that's where the Riptians came from, because I don't. I think the Riptians were only made in Photoshop. They were not an old cre creation that I made. Granted, I don't know if they are an old creation that I made. Who the hell knows? The only one who would know would be me, but I don't know, so nobody knows. All I know is that the... There, at least, I think there was a planet, another planet, near Criteria. I think. I'm not entirely too sure. If not, then there isn't. But there is a planet that I made, another dangerous planet, that has ginormous tsunamis. And it is terrifying. I had a dream, a few dreams. I think I might have said some of the dreams once before. One dream that's noticeable, notable that I remember. I was Cleveland Brown. I don't remember exactly when I turned into Cleveland Brown. But there I was in some strange extremist Christian's uh, trailer. Where it's like, you don't follow God or some shit. You ain't welcome in my home. Even though there's a giant tsunami happening out there. And here I am, like, hiding in the bathroom. And yeah, I, like, have it, like, br half-broken. And I'm just, like, hanging on for day of life. And they're, like, proud that, uh, they're, they're like, taunting. Because, like, he should have fought God or some shit. As there's, like, it, I'm just, like, in here. Like, here's the, a wall. Here's, like, a broken bits of the bathroom. There's, like, a giant, a whole bunch of water just washing in through. And then, you know, after, like, about, like, a few seconds or so, the water passes through, 
They they look upset. I exit out through the hole, and they just curse out at me as I just walk into this like decimated landscape. The tsunami has passed, but uh, as I for some reason sense another one coming, and it's like take the size of this guy here, right here. I think it was like. From here, the tsunami was this big. I don't, you can't see where the cursor is, but it's, it was like at least that big. And I was like walking up a tower that was at least around this big. But towards the end, like towards the end of the dream, I was like walking up a tower. Then I started to hear Cleveland Brown's voice as I was talking. I was like, oh, looks like I'm Cleveland Brown. So now I'm just in this tower, waiting for a tsunami to hit, with a lot of weird-looking creatures. I can't exactly explain what they look like. I can't, like, describe what they look like. Some human parts, but not, like, full humans. And we were all just waiting for the tsunami, hoping that this tower would hold. It held the first time around. Surely it can hold the next time around. Then I woke up. And we never knew if a tsunami hit that again. There was another tsunami dream that occurred. It was like me around like an overpass. I, I can even vaguely like make out what it was. Like there was an overpass here. I think there was something. It was either a pipe here, and I had like a grapple hook. Then I grappled onto here, and it was like yeah. I think there was at least stairs here and here, and it's like one of those kinds of overhead overpasses where there's like a thing here. And a tsunami, I think, was, like, at least this big. And here I am, like, hanging off of this like that. And I think that went further. So maybe it was, like, around here or so. I think that's what it was. But that's all I really could remember from that particular dream. There was something about it. Oh, there was a fucking song that my dream created that I can't really remember. Oh, I think I might have it. It was a weird song. I think it went, uh, it was, like... I don't remember most of it. All I remember was the chorus. It was Chris McLean, and he was singing this strange song, and then the chorus went up, and I, I think it went like, uh, but up, 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 wow. I've got to kill all of the zombies. Oh, God, I'm glad I remembered that. That was, like, stuck in my head for, like, a good freaking 10, 30 minutes while I was getting ready for work, and then after that, I forgot what it was. I don't remember if that was exactly what that was, but, oh, man, that was just... And it had a fucking cool beat to it. Why can't I, like, recreate that kind of beat? I, like, I can create really good songs in my head, but I don't know how to put it out on the composition thing. It was like a... Something like that. And just see freaking Chris McClain with some, like, pickaxe doing this while he's hitting upside the head of a zombie's head. My god, that was a freaking, that was a great, it, it sucked that it ended, it ended during the song. I don't even remember what the beginning part was. I don't, like, the, god, it was just, it was amazing. Amongst all of the other types of dreams that should in their rights be nightmares, but technically aren't, that one was amazing. I don't know why. There's just something about it. There's just something whimsical about it that made no sense whatsoever. All it was was Chris McLean, nobody else, and he was just singing about dying, having to kill all the zombies. And it's like he, I mean, he's already insane enough as it is, right? It wouldn't put it past him to go out of his way to just make a song as he kills a bunch of zombies. If you put this version of Chris McClane in The Walking Dead, all the zombies would be dead because he would be so insane, nobody would want to go near him. He keeps singing this song every time he's out there killing zombies. And, uh, you know, he, he did it. He, he successfully have gotten to kill all of the zombies. God, I was such a freaking amazing song that my brain created and I momentarily forgot, but I still kind of forgot the deep, finite, you know, instances of the song. Um, if only there was a way I can go inside of my brain 
you know, all the dreams that I have, there has to be like some kind of, you know, little bit of um, folder, uh, a biological folder I can access and upload it to a computer and just hear the song going out in full. It might have been like complete gobbledygook in the beginning. Gobbledygook is what I was trying to say, but I failed miserably trying to say it. But the chorus, the chorus lives in on in my head at the very least. Oh, man. I really wish there was some way I could recreate that, but there's no way I'll be able to recreate that. At, you know, at least I have a recorded version of it. Oh, man. Well, that's. I'm glad I was able to remember that. You know, we got something there. Something to think about, I guess. <laughs> Well, we try to painstakingly get all the shadow bits here because there's just so much here to have to do. This is way more complex in the shadow department than I really realized. But we're doing it. Slowly but surely, we're doing it. Well, that's going to suck. It's fine. We don't need too much shadows on the birds, I don't think. <laughs> Ugh, <laughs> uh, man. I'm not, it's just... There's probably some songs that my brain has created in the past, but I just can't remember most of them. Which makes sense. It's been a while. I'm just glad I remembered that one. That was like this today, right? It was today that I thought of that, right? Uh, it's like, it just, like... I don't know why, but my brain trying to re-remember what it was, not going to work. Just, like, you know, talking about dreams, casually going through it, get a, a brief hint of what the song sounded like, immediately remembers. Ooh, perfect. Flawless. I'm glad I was able to, at the very least, talk about that. I don't even remember if the lyrics were, at, at least that part of the lyrics was right, because there was something about I've got to kill all the zombies. I think there, like, there was less syllables. I feel like there was. There had to have been. <laughs> I just I can't stop imagining a happy, like, nonchalant, smiling face. The usual smile that Chris McLean has as he just slaughters countless numbers of zombies. It's like that one guy singing, um, what was it? Ba-da, 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 ba da Tequila, that's what it was. That one guy singing tequila while trying to, um, you know, mess around with the zombie. Just imagine Chris McLean going around singing the, uh, I've got the kill of the zombies. Is I like all of the or all of the? But I think that I think there's less syllables. I think it's like when I woke up, I was slowly starting to lose the song. But the little bits that I could remember are the ones that I've got right now, currently. Yes, sir. -y. Somebody try to recreate it. At the very least, you got one bit of the lyric, or the, the chorus. You got the chorus. I doubt you'll be able to replicate the exact, you, you know, the exact music that I had in my head. I don't even know what the instrument is called. The, uh... Do, 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 something like that. What was it? It's not a sax, is it? No. Electric keyboard? No, oh, it can't be that either. Doesn't make any sense. Ugh, I really wish I knew more uh, about how instruments are supposed to sound and whatnot, or the names of the instruments. That would probably help in making music if I knew what instrument I'm trying to find. Partly why I am so adamant on 
procrastinating on trying to get the music bits for at least what I'm working on currently for Paint Maze done with. Uh, it sucks. I wish I was better at making music. I'm better at, I'm good at drawing, decent storytelling, I'd like to think. But music is my one downfall. The one thing that I would have to look up freaking royalty-free music on if I wanted to, like, have some kind of music, but I don't want that. I want my own music. At the very least, attempt to. I got a good-sounding beat with the boom, 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 boom. And the beginning and the end of the first level sounds good. Just the middle one is the one that I really got to try to adjust. Obviously, because, you know, considering the fact that uh, we were not, re not really sure how to do that, obviously it doesn't sound as good. I do want to adjust that at some point. I just do not know when. It also didn't help that I didn't really, like, in high school, I didn't really, like, care for the music class that I I, didn't even, I don't even think I selected the music class. Same with the photography class. I don't even believe I selected that. I don't really remember what I selected. I think most of it is predetermined, right? That doesn't make any sense. Why would it be predetermined? Now, either way, uh, you know, you gotta just dive in and learn by throwing your head against the wall and trying to think about it. Like, how things work. I did have that one good song from uh, Space Blasters, rest in peace, that game. There's no way I can make Space Blasters work with Dream's piddly thermometer system. The thermometer sucks. I wouldn't have been able to have made what I made in Dream's what I have currently in Paint Maze. At least the gameplay uh, thing works fine. It's just, you know, the map. I would say the only way to have made that work in Dreams is to just make the level system and make the level selection thing be simplistic. But I don't like that. I don't like that at all, so I decided to do a Unity version instead. And I don't like that better, Cat. <clears throat> uh, I'm still thinking about that song. And it sounds like there's like uh, at least a few Chris McClane's layered during the but up 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 I think that's what it was because I think I went too much in the blahs. But up but up but up but up but up but up That's what it was. I've got to kill all of the zombies. God. It's a song that doesn't exist in all reality, but exists somewhere out there within dreamscapes. We just got to find it. Oh, how cool would that be if somebody figured out how to enter like dreamscapes, and they just choose some random person's dream, and the first thing they come across in that dream is Chris McClane singing about killing zombies in a music video-esque style. That's the first sound we get to hear when we finally figure out how to enter the dreamscape. Oh, that would be awesome. Man, I hope I live long enough to see that, or at the very least, my spirit lives, or lives, my spirit um, stays within this plane long enough to be able to hope that one day they'll be able to do that. Oh, man, I, I wish, I, I really, I, that's what I would want. want. Please, for all, for all that is um, weird, please let this occur within our lifetime. Just to be able to see this. Ah, oh, man, what the hell is that? Holy shit, we're almost at the 4 o'clock instance. I expect that this is going to take a while, but this is taking way longer than I imagined. Hmm. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, watch, I'm probably going to forget it as well, which sucks. I have it right now in my head, but I'm probably going to forget. mm <laughs> 
<clears throat> all right, I think that's all the shadows I can really put in right now. So now it's time for the fog. This is going to suck. There's so many different areas I could put fogs in, and i got to figure out how the hell I want to do this. Like, I don't know, a nice, good, light yellow glow, a nice blue hue. <clears throat> this seems like it's too blue. This seems like it's too bright. That would seem better if it wasn't so bright. I guess that one kind of works. That one seems too bright, at least for now. Alright, that's just the foreground. Now we go into the rest of it. No. 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 Unless we go at like 5 or something. Because I do 10 for pretty much everything, but if I just go at 5 instead, it might work better. <clears throat> right, this is where things are going to get a little tricky, isn't it? Um, yeah, because a lot of the mid-ground is there. Unless we don't have too much, and I just choose some random spot to have some of this in. <clears throat> I could just put it in the boss B category. Cyan would work better. And too gloomy. This also seems too bright. How about a brighter yellow? Brighter than that? That could work. <clears throat> but where is this at right now? Past there? I could probably delete some here. Yeah, we got the horde here. Um, I'm gonna try some real quick. <clears throat> there we go. Mostly keep the yellow up top, I guess. Um, we could maybe do some in the Pisidious. So now we've got E, and we'll try to make this one more of a, a tealish color. <clears throat> That's not what I wanted. Or a light blue color. Light blue can work. I just gotta get rid of some up top. Maybe keep some of that like that. Depends, really. You can see some of the clouds there. Storkill. F. I think this is an F. What I could do, actually... <clears throat> get me a nice light green. That's not light. Or a light yellow? No. Ah, eh, blue is fine. But make sure we delete some off of these guys, at least. The fog is the fog, obviously. And like all toasters, toast, toast! No shit, dumbass! Anyways, pink. Eh, uh, less pink. Well, maybe. Pinker. I don't see there's there's not that much of a difference with this one at least. Alright, I think that's unless I could do another one in the extreme jungle rules. <laughs> well not if it's at like a fifty percent opacity. We'll just put it at the bottom of backdrop instead.
Uh, is that what I want, or do I want it to be more bluish? No, how about this one? No, how about yellow? No, I'll just do that one instead. All right, good, great, fantastic. And I don't know if I went in the right order with most of these, but it's fine. <clears throat> All right, Cadillac, you sleep still? Sunrays, whoops. We're almost done. Unfortunately, I won't be able to post this until Thursday, but that's fine. Depends now on what the sun color I want to be. Do I want to be a nice... And I do kind of like that look, though. Blue, for the most part, but has a nice yellow-orange overlay that goes over everything. The blue and the orange mix together, correct? I do believe so, at least. Uh, my bones is sore. Matter of fact, I'll check it out right now real quick, assuming Google loads. Uh, color wheel. Oh, orange goes into light blue. But yeah, basically the orange type. Light orange goes into blue. And the next color of a tier of blue. Regardless, orange goes into blue. Just how red goes into green and purple goes into yellow somehow. How is that? Why is that determined like that? Who knows? Who can say, really? Who could say? That's not what I want. My god, the sunlight making the thing there even more like difficult to see. <laughs> I guess that makes sense, technically speaking. This is still the same thing, right? I imagine it is. Why wouldn't it be? Why did I why would I have had to change it out? Yeah, I'm just gonna assume it's the same one. There's still more that I can do around most of this area here. Getting the particles placed here real quick, deleting some of the particles so there's not too much of it. Then there's the sun flares. There we go. Then there's also the shadow rays. That is also going to be a little bit of a pain in the arse. I do not need to use the way. Man, we've been at this for two and a half hours. Jesus. All right, it's fine. We are almost done with this anyway, so yeah. So since the sun is going in that direction, we'll have this go like so. Uh, I'll reduce this to like 90 or so, so it's not too much. And I'll reduce this to 60 and try to get these guys all dealt with a little bit here and there, like so. <clears throat> these guys aren't really technically really being affected by that, but I'm doing it. Anyways. Yeah, look at these guys here. It shows that there's at least a little bit more life here. Way more life than most of the background drawings that I've done that don't have too much uh, things in it. Back up a bit. That's too much shadow rays down there. Makes sense that we would get like at least a significant amount of shadow rays coming off of this thing, right? Not too much though, but just enough to make it look like there's a significant effect occurring here. Now these guys got some shiny rays coming off of them. Some shadow rays coming off of the islands over here. The trees. More trees. Even more trees. The ant thing. The mit the mit mitrimic. I think I called it. I forgot its name already. Are you? Yep, the mitrimic. Look, can you blame me? These names are exotic and weird. Of course they're exotic and weird. This is an alien planet. Alien planets need alien names. And that's what teenage me has declared, and that's what current me has declared as well. 
Besides, I doubt that many people are really going to remember any of the creatures here, but even if they do, they're probably going to look at it and be like, huh, okay, I'll remember their name. That's the creature that I will remember, because I like that creature. Right now, we just have basic creatures. We haven't gone to any of the more creepier ones. If you don't count these things as creepy, giant wasps the size of a, what do you call it, giant snake-like thing in the water, swimming inside of the lake. It's a very small lake, actually. <laughs> well, big to them. As they go over here, they're like this size. So this lake is actually pretty big to them. Which makes sense, right? Get some shadow rays coming across this thing. Some shadow rays coming across this. Some shadow rays coming across this and this. Some trees I haven't really fully did shadow rays in. At least that that I've noticed, at least. How many here do not have shadow rays? I never thought I'd have a point where I'd be like, Oh, I forgot a shadow ray. Did I already get these guys? I'll get them again, just in case. Can't really see too much of their shadow rays anyways. These guys technically don't need it, but I'll give it to them anyways. <coughs> some shadow rays here, and some shadow rays there. And some shadow rays happening over here. And some happening off of these guys over here. And I just re re read something. Extreme jungles go all the way up into the area where there is no atmosphere. There's no oxygen. So I got something pretty cool in mind for that when it's time to draw it. <clears throat> Wait, I forgot you! Also, I technically don't have shadows in the middle. Which I guess technically you probably don't really need that much. So it's fine. I will, at the very least, however, get some sparkles in here. Others scatter. Shape dynamic. Uh, some spacing, I guess. Stick me down to the water. I'm going to go on ahead and add some sparkles to it. Go so to here. Go and do this. Gonna go down to nine, or maybe not nine, maybe like five or something. <clears throat> maybe increase the count. I don't know if that's gonna work as well as I think. I have another idea. <clears throat> dynamic shape size, scatter, other dynamic. No spacing, or at least 1% spacing. Ah, shit. Mayhaps not be a good idea. But it might work. Question, am I seeing the sparkles now? I think. I don't know, we'll just let it sit here for a bit. Relax a little bit while we wait for this to do its thing. I don't know how long it's going to take. Might have been a mistake, but it's fine. I'll put it right on top of this thing to make it look like it's thinking. Or right on top of this thing. It's just standing there thinking with its tongue out. No thoughts, empty head. Brainless. Waiting around the... Uh... I think you can see the sparkles slowly appearing. I can't tell. This is taking longer than it should. Hmm? Ah, it's done. Perfect. Uh, what happened? What's different? Wow, all that for that? You disappoint me. Okay, fine. I'll do it at like 300. I won't go too much. I think I'm seeing, you know, sparks there and whatnot. Where are all these sparkles? I'm not getting as much sparkles as I was hoping I'd get. Um, let me just do this again. Not for crying out loud. 
Uh, why do you have to take up so much time to do that? I don't know why. <coughs> I mean, I can see the sparkles at least, which is great. Question is, should it be vivid lighting? No. Well, it could be we colorize it. <clears throat> um, well, hold on. Saturation. You change. Well, I can't freaking tell because it's too damn small. Colorize. Yeah. All right, go to here, go to, to five. Now let's try to make it vivid lighting. Or overlay. Back to vivid lighting. Or we just cycle through some things and see what it looks like. Go all the way up to normal. What does it look like? Cool, I don't want dissolve. Don't want darken, don't want that, don't want that. Nope, lighten. I can't tell the different screen. Color dodge, linear dodge, overlay. Soft light, hard light, vivid light, linear light, pin light. Difference, exclusion, hue, saturation, color, luminosity. I can't tell the difference. I'm going to try something. Okay, we could try that one out. Another thing I could do that might work just as well, and if not even better, is this. Yeah, I could even more sparkles up in here. But if I'm doing that, I'm probably gonna have to make this less bright as it is, so yeah. More sparkles. So adjust that back. Bring the light up. Saturation. No clue. Just bring the light up. Make it overlay. And maybe make it like 50 or something. Or 70? Depends, really. I could also add in some sparkles. Nice, sparkling, shimmering water, essentially. Oh yeah, wait, I almost forgot about that one technique. I have the thing now, the special technique. Hold on. Water full saturation. Let me try this out again. Water overlay. I'll just real quickly get this in. I don't need to do anything else here in that department. I just gotta try to do some more stuff here. So I think the idea was shade most of it, the areas that we want to shade at least. Like so. So right now we're just making it brighter. Now it's darker in the middle. And it's like this. It's just going to be like the overlay that we have here, nothing too special. Now we increase the saturation overlay, and we'll put it at maybe a solid, press the damn thing right, 20. So you can see there's a little bit of a texture to it. Another thing I could do is put it underneath the water and make everything beneath it look more bluer. On the far spectrum, definitely does look nice. But I think 50 is better. This seems too little, this seems just enough. Okay, good, I'm glad I got those effects in. The only other kind of effects I could probably think of would be the um, mist clouds. Before I go into the full-on effects and finish this off. Which, by the way, I should go to there right now, at the very least, get that ready. 
the mist clouds, kind of like in the morning clouds, you know? Probably not going to be this, you know, noticeable. Depends, really. Do I want that to be that, you know, visible, or do I want to try to reduce it a bit more? Yeah, because, of course, you got some mists hanging along the, the grounds here. Man, look at this place. It definitely does look a little bit more, you know, intimidating. Just seeing giant wasp nests, giant trees and whatnot. Especially when you have this tree right here. <coughs> and you just have a, a giant tree in the background shrouded by most of the fog. I think I could probably bring this down to like a something like 90. If not 90, then like an 80. There we go. Another thing I could probably add effect-wise is embers. That should be easy enough because all I gotta do is just make this even smaller. Go over to here. I don't know where this fire is at amongst everything here. I'm gonna try to have this go above everything else. Where is this going above? Where the hell's the fence? Where is this? Let me see. Uh, yep, you're even further. And there's the grass. Uh, and there's the bush. Never mind, there's still more. Alright, now for the embers. Is this one... Yeah, it is. 101. It's not gonna work if it's not 100 for 100, you fool. Wait a minute. More of an other's dynamic here. And I think we should make one of them it should be orange and red, actually. Yeah, there we go. And of course, we probably should have some smoke at least. <clears throat> that would make the most sense when having a campfire here, right? Some smoke coming from here. But we try to delete some surrounding that, at the very least. I did not mean to go that far out, but that's fine. And you just got like a, the smoke dispersing out from here. Because you would see some smoke coming from there, right? Slowly going out and dispersing out into... The uh, the wild smoke coming from the the broken thingy, the broken thing, the burnt thingy. Don't know why the hell I said broken thingy. Brain is a broken thingy. That's for fucking certain. And I'll even have a little bit of smoke coming off of this, but not a lot. Obviously, because it's small fire. Small fire is not going to cause giant smokestack, especially if you use the right kind of fuel. I don't think there's anything more here that I could add that I would like to add. I think we're pretty much good now, question mark. I mean, we're almost fucking three hours into this, so I would say it would be a good time to get close to finishing this off. So, light orange area. It's going to be a lot of light orange, uh, yellows, and... Maybe some teals and blues here and there, light blues. Either way, it's going to be a nice, bright, and sunny day. Shining down on the land below. The first drawing, the first professional drawing upgraded from me. Oops, this, from measly. That's a different thing. That's a Dead Space 2 drawing I did. Actually, if you want to see that one, I'll just go on ahead and uh, but, but, uh, bring this up real quick. See right there? Dead Space 2. That was, that was pretty properly at the time, right? This thing broke off, if you were wondering why that's there. <coughs> that's my high school drawing. 
As you can see, I have vastly improved and have increased media. Anyways, from this to this. <laughs> I was saying that now, despite the fact that the drawing's not done yet, but uh, the point still stands. We have vastly improved. Even the unfinished version looks a million times better than the sketches that I have done before in the past. Which is great. <clears throat> it's great to see. It's great to see all those drawings that I've done in the past weren't for naught. As I upgraded to a new medium and got better at utilizing it. Well, I might still need a yellow area if I want to have some of the, this area be Brit... Uh, bl Brit up? Britain up? Bright, Brit up? Bright up? Brained up? Christ. Coming up with a new word over here, Brit up. Which is not what you think. It's like Brighten up, but in a some strange backworld text or some shit. I don't know. And that might be too bright. And that might be too blue. How many effects, right? Would teal work good here? Like a certain level of teal. I mean, I could go for a solid 20. Still have like a nice teal uh, look here. So this is more of a teal area. I can definitely get a light blue area in here. I think I just need to reduce it. Let me try regular blue real quick. No, let me try the other regular blue real quick. Although that one is more of a light blue. Let me try it at 20. See, the thing is, it seems too, too blue. Unless I, like, mix in some yellows. Like, have some blue there, but also have yellow kind of, like... Yeah, just make yellow go for most of the lands. Instead of just the, the sunlight, obviously. Now let's get some pink in here, too. That'd be too much pink. I don't know why, but I'm getting Valheim Meadows music in my head all of a sudden. Even though this is a hell of a lot more advanced than the Meadows would ever hope to be. And also a hell of a lot more dangerous than the Meadows could ever hope to achieve. You thought... If you're playing, if you're one who plays Valheim, you thought the 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 creatures of Valheim were bad. You've not even begun to see just how terrible things can get with the creatures of Criteria. Yet somehow these guys still survive through most of it. Yeah, get some at least some orange around the dust area. I think I can get a good green area somewhere around here. Too green. Too green. Okay, I don't think I have any greens I can use then. Never mind, I thought I could get a green in here. Maybe I can if I choose a different spot. No. Nope. I don't know what else I can add here. I'd say a nice light blue along the edge here, but it seems just way too bright. And if it's way too bright for my monitor, then it's way too bright for most. Because don't forget, my monitor is less saturated than the phones are for some reason, so I gotta try to keep that in mind. <coughs> Maybe we don't need any more effects. Maybe now we just need to go over to the sepia. This one's gonna be interesting. It's got to be like a combination of like, oh, I kind of like that one, actually. That one and some blues. Some shade of blue somewhere around here. And matter of fact, I could do this. I can go around with this and see if I can find some blue. No. How about that? No. How about a brighter yellow? Mm, to an extent, I guess it works well here, at least. How about this one? 
No, not bright enough. Too orange, but it could work for back here, maybe. I mean, eh, it's a bit too much for that area. I could probably do this. Not too bright. Or this. Uh, that one. That That's never going to get used. Would that work? I could definitely see this working for the tree section over here. Let's try not to get the, what do you call it, caught up in that at least. For the, not tree section, the, mm, what do you call it, section. The tundra section, that's right, that's the word. Uh, hold on, what was the yellow thing that I was using? This one? Yeah, let me try to also just adjust this with the yellow bits, assuming that's the same sepia color that I had been using. Try to balance it out, but try not to go too far. Go so bit by bit, so I don't have to worry about undoing too much. Good. Great. I feel like there's still more that I can do for this area over here, but I just don't know what. I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't matter. What matters is we try to get a nice... Some nice color here. Do I have like a brighter yellow I can use? Maybe I'll make a brighter yellow. Uh, but remember, too bright is not good. If I go too bright, it's going to be too bright on the phone. Even brighter. Oh, I, like, I do like that, though. If there's anything I can do to make the this more blue. But not too blue. No, not that. How about this? No. How about that? No. Well, sheesh. I don't even remember what most of this was, but I do kind of like that to an extent. Yeah. I could definitely probably put more teal stuff here, though. Mainly due to the tree's underside. But I don't exactly know how I would make that work. Darker blue? Yeah, darker blue. I don't always say that, but I feel like most of the blue down here shouldn't be that dark, so we could probably make it like... No, not that. We could probably make like the bottom here so it's not that dark. But still somewhat keeping the... Uh, yeah, keeping that like that. Honestly, I don't think there's anything more that I can do here. The only other thing I could probably think of... Not too much. I was about to say maybe that, but I think that's pretty fine as is. Maybe we can, like, delete some of the yellow or orange bits down here a little bit so it's not too deep down here, but it lays perfectly onto the lake. Other than that, the only other bits of uh, lights here that I can probably think of is Fire Glow. And we could just have, even though it's kind of pointless, I guess the fire could basically be used as a means to, um, you know, ward off the... Well, it wouldn't make any sense because those guys have the abilities to shoot... What do you call it? To shoot magma, so why would they be afraid of a little fire? They literally have fire inside of their bodies. Well, maybe it helps for other types of creatures, but not the boss. Jesus Christ. There we go. Ooh, -hoo boy. The first of, um, the first of this, right, cat? Right? And you're just gonna lick your thigh. Alright, fine then. 
I think that's all there is to this, though. We've got all of this done with. i got to hide all of this crap, though. Go back to my basic swatch. And there we go. So, there we go, folks. Criteria for Great Plains. The first of many regions. We have 15 creatures here. And we can get even more creatures made soon enough. But, with effects, without effects, with effects, without effects. Huge difference with all the bright stuff here. Like where it's going. So that's all for today, folks. We're three hours over to this, and I need some rest. So, without further ado, thank y'all for watching today's episode of Our Time. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, subscribe for more, check out that there playlist, and of course, for this episode of Our Time right over here. And since it's going to be out on a Thursday, the most recent episode of Played Up ROTC Edition right over here. Anyways, thank y'all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Later.